the latest on the search for the missing Titanic submersible, uh, where the efforts to find it and the five people on board is now at a really critical stage. Various reports are saying that the oxygen supplies will now have run out. The experts um, are still calling it a search and mission, search and rescue mission, though, so we do have to remain hopeful about the, the, the future and obviously our, our, our thoughts and our hearts go out to all those families that are involved in this. It's a really, really difficult and unique situation that those people have found themselves in. But it has sort of asked, it's prompted um, uh, quite a few questions about regulation and whether the trip should have been allowed in the mm. first place. What are the rules about that, Jane? Well, it seems to be very complex. I mean, the, be the, the basics of this, um, I read a report yesterday, it says it, it had not been approved by any regulatory body before the trip. This is a, obviously a commercial enterprise. Um, <clears throat> I think three of the people had paid to be on board. Uh, so it's what a lot of people are calling sort of Titanic tourism. Um, and I think NASA had been involved in building parts of the vessel, but have very much distanced themselves and said, look, we might have provided some of the parts, but we have never tested the vessel. It's never been tested yeah. by us for this for this use. Um, and, and a CBS reporter, David Pogue, now he went on it uh, two years ago and he said he had to sign a waiver and the waiver said, this experimental vessel has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, emotional trauma or death. Um, so it, it's weird, isn't it? Because you think that, you know, if we go and buy an aspirin, it will have been regulated yeah, by yes. a, a, a clinical body. So it, it sort of defies belief. But in a way, you know, when you're selling things to the public on a grand scale, obviously it does have to be regulated. And maybe if yeah. you're doing something that, if it exploded in the air and maybe fell onto a town, it would have yeah. to be regulated. But maybe mm. this is because it's your own personal mm. choice to get in it yeah. and you're not actually harming anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the regulation isn't as tough, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, because oh, there, there have been questions raised about going to the wreck in the first place, which essentially is a, is a graveyard, and it is protected by UNESCO, um, by uh, a protection that was done back in 2001. And it does protect cultural, historical or archaeological archeolo objects that have been underwater for 100 years. So it is a protected area, but that doesn't necessarily mean... That you, don't, you can still kind of go yeah. round it, as long as you don't... Because, you know, yeah. somebody was talking about that you can see shoes on the seabed and trunks and things like that. So I think you're not allowed wow. to touch any of that, but you can just sort yeah. of sort of view it. But it, it is a graveyard. It is. And, you know, it, it, you know, you sort of think about these historical sites. Everest comes to mind. You know, there have been calls to stop people climbing up Everest for personal gain because it's so polluted and it's so... As a result of people leaving rubbish everywhere, yeah. um, it's, it's quite dangerous, becoming quite dangerous for the local population. And it's sort of like, you know, yes, you want to achieve this great thing or you want to see this great thing, but you also have to think about the ramifications of doing that, perhaps. Yeah, I suppose commercially it's kind of exploited isn't it? It's all finance at the end of the day. It's money, assuming the people that have paid, what, £190,000 or something to go there, you know, that money's got to be going somewhere. But I suppose it's a personal risk as well, you know, you take that risk, you know what the risks are, and I suppose if no-one's ever done anything before, then how do you follow, you know what I mean? True. So it's like if you go to space, I mean, I don't know if I'd ever want to go into space unless they've done a million, million flights, uh, to be fair. <laughs> um, but, again, it's a personal risk. You don't yeah. know if you're going to come back down. You pay your money to go commercially. But I suppose, like you say, it's when it's at risk of affecting things that are very... Um, personal. Yeah, personal, yeah. environmentally yeah. friendly. Yeah. I think scientifically, I mean... people should go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a focus, of course, on the families, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about um, the stepson of Hamish Harding, who's had a mixed response from the public because he's been posting uh, tweets, which he has now actually taken down, uh, regarding his stepfather, because um, he had been going to a concert. He went to a concert, a Blink-182 concert, and had been tweeting about being at, at this concert, but also asking people for their prayers and saying, this is the way I cope, is I want to go and see my favourite band um, play. But it, it comes under that, I think, the umbrella of people deal with situations differently and we can't really expect everybody to react the same, yeah. exact same way to mm. every single um, situation.
No, I just laid in bed last night because we spoke about it on the show yesterday, imagining what it must be like to be five people trapped mm. two miles yeah. under the sea. And what... I mean, they're laying there and their families are all, like, at home praying. And I thought, when I wake up this morning, please, God, that they've been found, that they've got them out or whatever. Yeah. But it hasn't, it's just got worse. And as you said, like, the oxygen's running out now. Yeah. 